the Broadway Theater Archive. If I could be any one of us. Oh, not a real one. Don't you dare say I'm dependent upon you because I'm so not. truly speak, speak to you. Of all the pain. No good role for this act. The government counts the cadence of a woman who cannot keep her lusts under control. A collection of comedy and drama available on video cassette. BroadwayArchive.com. Theater in America, a series of great performances produced especially for television in collaboration with America's outstanding theater companies. Hello, I'm Hal Holbrook. Welcome to Theater in America. An acting company is not created arbitrarily overnight. It develops organically over the years. Starting with graduates of New York City's Juilliard School, John Hausman, as artistic director of The Acting Company, has developed a permanent touring repertory company offering classical acting that has both guts and style. The Time of Your Life is one of the acting company's productions by a contemporary playwright. And while it may seem worlds away from the Shakespeare and Restoration classics that are also a part of the company's work, it takes the same degree of technique, training, and discipline. William Soroyan's play of optimism tinged by melancholy was first produced in 1939, winning the Pulitzer Prize as the best play of that year. It's Soroyan's most enduring play. So it is rather appropriate that this acting company, which has grown up together, should bring us a performance of a theatrical work which has grown up in America to become one of her best loved plays. <laughs> term of your life, live so that in that good time there shall be no ugliness or death for yourself or for any life your life touches. Seek goodness everywhere, and when it is found, bring it out of its hiding place and let it be free and unashamed. Place in matter and in flesh the least of the values, for these are the things that hold death and must pass away. Discover in all things that which shines and is beyond corruption. Encourage virtue in whatever heart it may have been driven into secrecy and sorrow by the shame and terror of the world. Ignore the obvious. It is unworthy of the clear eye and the kindly heart. Be the inferior of no man, or of any man be the superior. Remember that every man is a variation of yourself. No man's guilt is not yours, nor is any man's innocence a thing apart. Despise evil and ungodliness, but not men of ungodliness or evil. These understand. Have no shame in being kindly and gentle. But if the time comes in the time of your life to kill, kill and have no regret. In the time of your life live so that in that wondrous time you shall not add to the misery and sorrow of the world, but shall smile to the infinite delight and mystery of it. Morning, everybody. Paper, mister? 
paper, mister? How many you got? Five. No foundation. All the way down the line. It's a free country, ain't it? You can't beat that machine. Oh, yeah? Tom? Tom? Where the hell is he every time I need him? Hey, Tom! What do you want? I want the boy to get me a watermelon. That's what I want. What do you want? Money, a love, a fame, or what? You won't get them studying the racing form. I like to keep abreast of the times. Who saved your life? You did, Joe. Thanks. How did I do it? What? How did I do it? Joe, you know how you did it. I want you to answer me. How did I save your life? I've forgotten. Made me eat all that chicken soup three years ago when I was sick and hungry. Chicken soup? Yeah. Three years, is it that long? Sure, Joe, 1937, 1938, 1939. This is 1939, Joe. Yeah, never mind what year it is. Tell me the whole story. Took me to the doctor. Mm-hmm. Gave me money for food and clothes. Yep. Paid my room rent. Joe, you know all the different things you did. You in good health now. Yeah, Joe? You got clothes. Yeah, Joe. Eat three times a day, sometimes four. Yeah, Joe, sometimes five. You got a place to sleep. Yeah, Joe. Then where the hell have you been? Joe, I was out in the street listening to the boys talking about the trouble down here on the waterfront. I want you to be around when I need you. I'll do it again. Joe, one guy out there says there's got to be a revolution before anything will ever be all right. Yeah, I know all about it. Here. Take this money. Go up to the Emporium. Do you know where the Emporium is? Yeah, Judge. All right, take the elevator up to the fourth floor. Walk around to the back of the toy department. Buy me a couple of dollars worth of toys and bring them here. Toys? What kind of toys, Joe? And any kind of toys. The little ones I can put on this table. What do you want toys for, Joe? What? All right, all right. You have to get sore at everything. What do people think? A big guy like me buying toys. What? People. Joe, you're always making me do crazy things for you, and I'm the guy who gets embarrassed. You just sit in this place and make me do all the dirty work. Do what I tell you. Okay. Here's your new wine. Wait a minute. Here's a nickel. Put it in the phonograph, number seven. I want to hear that waltz again. Boy, I'm glad I don't have to stand and listen to it. What are you hearing that song anyway, Joe? We listen to that song ten times a day. Why can't we hear number six? Or number nine? Or number two. There are a lot of other numbers. Put the nickel in the phonograph. And sit down and wait until the music's over. Then go get me some toys. OK. OK. Never mind being a martyr about it, either. The cause isn't worth it. gave you some instructions. What do you want, Joe? I want you to come to your senses. Oh, I got it, Joe. I got it in Porium, fourth floor in the back, toy department. Two dollars worth of toys that you can put on the table. Who the hell is he to push a big man like that around? And I'll expect you back in a half hour. Don't get sidetracked anywhere. Just do what I tell you. Can I bet four bits on a horse race? There's a long shot, precious time. Going to win by ten lengths. Oh, 
thought you wanted him to get you a watermelon. I forgot. What's the dream? What? What's the dream now? What dream? What dream? The dream you're dreaming. Suppose he did bring you a watermelon. What the hell would you do with I'd it? I'd put it on the table, I'd look at it, and then I'd eat it. What the hell do you think I'd do with it? Sell it for a profit? How should I know what you do with anything, huh? What I'd like to know is where you get your money from. What work do you do? Bring us a bottle of champagne. Champagne? Would you rather have something else? What's the big idea? Well, I thought you might like some champagne. I myself am very fond of it. Yeah, but what's the big idea? You can't push me around. It's not in my nature to be unkind to another human being. I have only contempt for wit. Otherwise, I might say something obvious, therefore cruel, and perhaps untrue. You be careful what you think about me. I have only the noblest thoughts for both your person and your spirit. What are you talking about? You shut up! Hey, he owns this place. He is an important man. All kinds of people come to him looking for work. Comedians, singers, dancers. I don't care. He can't call me names. All right, sister. I know how it is with a two-dollar whore in the morning. Don't you dare call me names! I used to be in burlesque. Uh, if you were ever in burlesque, I used to be Charlie Chaplin. I was in burlesque. I've played the burlesque circuit from coast to coast. I've had flowers sent to me by European royalty. I've had dinner with young men of wealth and social position. You're dreaming. I was in burlesque. Kitty Duval, that was my name. Life-size photographs of me in costume in front of burlesque theaters all over the country. I believe you. Have some champagne. There he goes again. Miss Duval. That's not my real name. That's my stage name. I'll call you by your stage name. All right, sister, make up your mind. You're going to have champagne with him or not? Pour the lady some wine. Okay, professor. Why you come to this joint instead of one of them swanky dumps uptown is more than I can understand. I mean, why don't you have champagne at the St. Francis? Why don't you drink with a lady? Don't you call me names, you dentist. Dentist? What kind of cousin is that? This guy doesn't belong here. The only reason that I've got champagne is because he keeps ordering it all the time. And don't think that you're the only one he drinks champagne with. He drinks with all of them. He's crazy or something. Nick, I think you're going to be all right in a couple of centuries. I'm sorry. I don't understand your English. To the spirit, Kitty Duval. Thank you. Yeah? Would you mind putting a nickel in the phonograph, number seven? Seven! I know, I know. No, I don't mind at all, Your Highness. Although, personally, I am not a lover of music. As a matter of fact, I think Tchaikovsky was a dope. Tchaikovsky? Where did you ever hear of Tchaikovsky? He was a dope. Yeah, why? They talked about him on the radio one Sunday morning. He was a sucker. He let a woman drive him crazy. Yeah, I stood behind the bar and I listened to that goddamn stuff and cried like a baby. None but the lonely heart. He was a dope. What made you cry? What? What made you cry, Nick? I don't know. Nick, I've been underestimating you. Play number seven. They get everybody worked up. They give everybody stuff that they shouldn't have. I like champagne and everything that goes with it. Big houses with big porches. Big rooms with big windows. Big lawns, big trees, flowers growing everywhere. And big shepherd dogs sleeping in the shade. I'm going next door to Frankie's to make a bed. I'll be right back. Make one for me. Who do you like? Precious time. Ten dollars? Across the board? No, on the nose.
Are you Nick? Are you Nick? I am Nick. And you use a great comedian? Who, for instance? Me? You. What's funny about you? Hello? Sunset 7349? May I speak to Elsie Mandelspiegel? My dance. You do gags and stuff. Yeah? In your costume? Or are you wearing your costume? <laughs> All I need is a cigar. <laughs> I'd walk out of the house and stand on the porch. Look at the trees and other flowers. Run across the lawn and lie down under a big tree. And read a book. A book of poems, maybe. Elsie Mandelspiegel. She has a room on the fourth floor. She's a nurse at the Southern Pacific Hospital. Elsie Mandelspiegel. She works at night. Elsie. Yes? Beer? No, sir. I'd like to talk to you. All right. Get funny. All right. Now, I'm standing on the corner of 3rd and Market. I'm looking around. I'm figuring it out. There it is, right in front of me. The whole city, the whole world. People going by. They're going somewhere. I don't know where, but they're going. I ain't going anywhere. Where the hell can you go? I'm figuring it out. All right? All right, I'm a citizen. A fat guy bumps his stomach into the face of an old lady. They were in a hurry. Fat and old. They bumped. Boom! I don't know. It may mean war. War! Germany, England, Russia. I don't know for sure. War! What's on your mind? Come on, speak up. You hungry or what? No, honest to God, I ain't hungry. All, all I want is a job. Well, what can you do, and how good are you? Well, I, I can uh, clean up. I, I can uh, wash dishes. I can run errands, anything. Elsie? Elsie, this is Dudley. Elsie, I'll jump in the bay if you don't marry me. Life isn't worth living without you. I can't sleep. I can't think of anything but you all the time. Day and night and night and day. Elsie, I love you. I love you. What? Is this Sunset 7349? Sunset 7943? Well, what's your name? Laureen? Laureen Smith. I thought you were Elsie Mandelspiegel. What? Dudley? Yeah, Dudley R. Bostwick. Yeah, R. It stands for Raoul, but I never spell it out. I'm very pleased to meet you, too. What? Hey, there's a lot of noise around here. Where am I? At Nick's on Pacific Street. Yeah, I work at the SP. I told him I was sick, so they gave me the afternoon off. Hey, wait a minute. I'll ask him. I'd like to meet you, too. <laughs> sure. Wait a minute. Hey, what's this address? Number three Pacific Street, you cad. Cad? You don't know how I've been suffering on account of Elsie. I take things too ceremoniously. I gotta be more lackadaisical. Hello, Eleanor. I mean, Laureen. It's number three Pacific Street. Sure, I'll wait for you. How you know me? You'll know me. I'll recognize you. Sure. Goodbye now. I'm standing there. I didn't do anything to anybody. Why should I be a soldier? <laughs> war. OK, war. I hate war. I retreat. I moved to Sacramento. All right, comedian, will you lay off a minute? Nobody's got a sense of humor anymore. The world's dying for comedy like never before, but nobody knows how to laugh. You belong to the union? What union? 
What, Union? Well, for the love of Mike, where have you been? Don't you know you just can't walk into a place, ask for a job, get one, and go to work like that? You gotta belong to one of the unions. I, I didn't know. Look, I, I gotta have a job real soon. Well, you gotta belong to a union. I, I don't want no charity. All I want is a chance to earn a living. Go into the kitchen and tell Sam to give you some lunch. Honest, I ain't hungry. But I've gone through for Elsie. I've got all kinds of funny ideas in my head to help make the world happy again. Yeah, no, he ain't hungry. He's really right. hungry. hungry. Say, see if you think this is funny. This is my own idea. I created this dance myself. It comes after the monologue. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Elsie, now I'm waiting for some dame I don't even know. Maureen Smith. Never saw her in my life. Just happened to get a wrong number. She turns on the personality, and I'm a cooked Indian. Give me a beer, please. What's the dream now, Kitty Duval? I dream of home. Christ, I always dream of home. I have no home, no place. But I always dream of all of us together again. We had a farm in Ohio. There was nothing good about it. It was always sad, there was always trouble. But I always dream about it as if I could go back and Papa would be there and Mama and Louie and my little brother Stefan and my sister Mary. I'm Polish. Duval. My name isn't Duval. It's Koronowski. Katerina Koronowski. We lost everything. The house, the farm, the trees, the horses, the cows, the chickens. Papa died. He was old. He was 13 years older than Mama. We moved to Chicago. We tried to work, we tried to stay together. Louie got in trouble. The fellas he was with killed him for something, I don't know what. Then Stefan ran away from home. 17 years old, I don't know where he is. Then Mama died. What's the dream? I dream of home. Here, all right. Now you sit down over here and you rest. That ought to hold you for a while, huh? Hey, why didn't you tell me you were hungry? All right now? Yeah, thanks. I, I didn't know I was that hungry. Okay, fine. Hey, what the hell do you think you're doing? This is my own idea. I'm a natural born dancer and comedian. You're no good. Why don't you try some other kind of work? Why don't you get a job in a store selling something? What do you want to be a comedian for? Nick, you've got to see my act. It's the greatest thing of its kind in America. All I want's a chance. No salary to begin. Let me try it out tonight. And if I don't well, okay, I'll go home. If Vaudeville wasn't dead, a guy like me would have a chance. You're not funny. You're a sad young punk. What the hell do you want to try and be funny for? You'll break everybody's heart. What's there for you to be funny about? You've been poor all your life, haven't you? Well, I've been poor, all right, but don't forget. Some things count more than some other what things. What counts more, for instance? What else? Talent, for count. instance, counts more than money, for instance. That's what, and I've got talent. I get new ideas night and day. Everything comes natural to me. I've got style. Just take me a little time to round it out, that's all. I run the lousiest dive in Frisco. A guy arrives and makes me stock up with champagne. The whores come in and holler at me that they're ladies. Talent comes in and begs me for a chance to show itself. Even society people come down here every once in a while, and I don't know what for. Maybe it's liquor. Maybe it's the location. Maybe it's my personality. Maybe it's the crazy personality of the joint, the old honky-tonk. 
Maybe they can't feel at home anywhere else. Dance with me. I never learned to dance. Anybody can dance. Just hold me in your arms. I'm very fond of you. I'm sorry I can't dance. I wish to God I could. Please. Forgive me. I'd like to very much. What did you get? Two dollars worth of toys. What'd you sell me for? Girl at the store asked me what I wanted with toys. I don't want to tell her. Joe, I gotta have money. After all you've done for me, Joe, I'll do anything in the world for you, but you gotta give me some money once in a while. What do you want it for? Oh, sure. Here. Here's five. Can you dance? I got second prize at the Palomar in Sacramento five years ago. Okay, dance with her. I mean Kitty Duval, the burlesque queen. I mean the queen of the world burlesque. Dance with her, she wants to dance. Joe, can I tell you something? I know, you don't have to. You love her. You really love her. I'm not blind, I know. Only take care of yourself. Don't get sick that way again. Comes in here and wants to be a dishwasher. Faints from hunger and then sits down and plays better than Heifetz. Heifetz? Plays the violin. All right, don't get careful. He's good, ain't he? Kitty? Don't talk. Just dance. Talk to on the telephone, Dudley R. Bostwick. Dudley R. Bostwick? Oh, yeah. He left here 10 minutes ago. You mean Dudley Bostwick, that poor man on crutches? Crutches? Oh, yeah. Dudley Bostwick. That's what he said his name was. He said to tell you not to wait. Well, are you sure you're not Dudley Bostwick? Who, me? My name is Roger Tenefrancia. I'm French-Canadian. I never saw the poor fellow before. It seems to me your voice is like the voice I heard over the telephone. A coincidence. An accident. <clears throat> A quirk of fate. Just one of those things. Dismiss the thought. That poor cripple hobbled out of here ten minutes ago. He said he was going to commit suicide. I only wanted to be of help. Help, what kind of help could she be of? Gee whiz, Elsie, gee whiz, I'll never leave you again. Ten, six, seven, three, four, four. Hello? Sunset 7349? May I speak to Elsie Mandelspiegel? Yes. No. This is not Dudley Bostwick. This is Roger Tenefrancia of Montreal, Canada. I'm a childhood friend of Miss Mandelspiegel's. We went to kindergarten together, god damn it. I love you. You want to come to my room? Have you got two dollars? Well, I've got five dollars, but I love you. You want to spend all that money? that longshoreman McCarthy. He'll be around. I'm going next door to see who won that third race at Laurel. Precious time won. <laughs> yeah, that's what you think. <laughs> Horse named McCarthy's running in the sixth race today. Hello? Hello, Elsie? Elsie? Oh, my God, she's come to the phone. Hello, Elsie, this is Dudley. I'm at Nick's on Pacific Street. You gotta come here and talk to me. Hello? Hello, Elsie? 
she hang up? Or was I disconnected? Well, that's some gadget. How much did I win? How do you know you won? Don't be silly. He said Precious Time was going to win by 10 lengths, didn't he? He's in love, isn't he? Okay, okay. I don't know why, but Precious Time won! Ah! You got 80 for 10. How do you do it? Faith. Faith. How do you win? By a nose. Look him up in the racing form. The slowest, the cheapest, the worst horse in the race, and the worst jockey. Oh. What's the matter with my luck? How much did you lose? 50 cents. You should never gamble. Why not? You always bet 50 cents. You got no more faith than a flea. That's why. How do you like this, Nick? It's not bad. Hang around. You can wait table. Hey, Wesley. Yeah? You play that again tonight? I don't know for sure, Mr. Nick. Nick? But, but I'll play something. Good. You hang around, too. <laughs> What do you want to come here for? You're too big a man for a little honky tonk. Oh, now, Nick. Some important people never come here. Here, have a drink. Thanks, I don't drink. Why don't you? I have responsibilities. You're head of the lousy vice squad. There's no vice here. Street walkers are working out of this place. What do you want? I just want you to know that it's got to stop. Well, what can I do? I can't tell a street walker from a lady. Are you married? You're not asking me questions. I'm telling you. You're a grown-up man. You ought to know better. Streetwalkers are working out of this place. Any more of it, I'll have your joint closed. Now, look, I've got no use for you or anybody like you. You're out to change the world from something bad to something worse, something like yourself. I'll be back tonight. Do yourself a big favor and don't come back tonight. Send somebody else. I don't like your personality. Don't break any laws. I don't like yours either. Hey, Nick, you gonna kill that man? I'm disgusting. Yeah, why? Why should I get worked up over a punk like that? Why should I hate him? He's nothing, he's nobody, he's a mouse. But every time he comes in here, I get worked up. He doesn't want to drink, he doesn't want to sit down, he doesn't want to take things easy. Will you tell me one thing? Do my best. What's a punk like that want to go out and try and change the world for? Does he want to change the world, too? You know what I mean. What's he want to bother people for? He's sick. He wants to change the world at that. So I go to work and I hate him. It's not him, Nick. It's everything. Yeah, I know, I know, but I still got no use for him. He hurts little people. One of the girls tried to commit suicide on account of him. I'll break his head if he hurts anybody around here. This is my joint. Or anybody's feelings, either. He may not be so bad deep down underneath. I know all about him. He's no good. I've got a good joint. There's nothing wrong here. Hey, comedian. Stick to the dancing tonight. I think you're okay. Hey, Wesley, yeah? you play that again tonight. That's fine. Thanks, Nick. Oh, my gosh, I'm on my way at last. Uh, hello, Ma. Is that you, Ma? Oh, it's me, Harry. I got the job. Say, that really is something. What is that, anyway? Nick, this is a toy. A contraption devised by the cunning of man to drive boredom or grief or anger out of children. A noble gadget. A gadget, I might say, infinitely nobler than any other I can think of at the moment.
delightful. Tragic, but delightful. Joe, that girl Kitty. What did she mean, calling me a dentist? I wouldn't hurt anybody, let alone a tooth. Madge Lobowitz? Is... what? What? Is the name Mabel Lepescu. What name? The name the initials ML stand for. The initials on your scarf. No. Margie Longworthy. No. Midge Laurie? My initials are JT. John? No. Martha Lancaster. No. Joseph? Well, uh, not exactly. That is my first name, but everybody calls me Joe. You know, my last name's a tough one. I'll help you a little. I'm Irish. Is it just plain Mary? Yes, it is. I'm Irish, too. At least on my father's side. English on my mother's side. I'm Irish on both sides. Mary's one of my favorite names. I guess that's why I didn't think of it. I met a girl in Mexico City named Mary once. She was an American from Philadelphia. She got married there, in Mexico City, I mean, while I was there. We were in love, too. Well, at least I was. You never know about anybody else. They were engaged, you see, and her mother was with her, and so, they went through with it. Thought I was going to marry her. <laughs> Kept thinking all the time about the kind of kids we'd be likely to have. But my favorite was the third one. <laughs> no, no, the first two were fine. They were fine and handsome and intelligent. But the third one was different. Dumb and goofy looking. <laughs> I liked him a lot. And when she told me she was going to be married, you know, I didn't feel so bad about the first two. It was that dumb one. Do you always drink a great deal? Not always. Only when I'm awake. <laughs> I sleep six or seven hours every night, you know. Oh, nice. I mean to drink when you're awake. It's privilege. Do you really like to drink? As much as I like to breathe. Why? Why do I drink? That question calls for a pretty complicated answer. Oh, I didn't mean... Oh, no, no. No, I insist I know why. It's only a matter of finding the word. Little ones. It, it really doesn't matter. Oh, yes, yes, it does. Now, why do I drink? I don't know. Why does anybody drink? Every day has 24 hours. Yes, that's true. 24 hours. And out of every 24 hours, at least 23 and a half are... My God, I don't know why. 
dead, dull, boring, empty, and murderous. Minutes on the clock. No time of living. Doesn't make any difference who you are, what you do. 23 and a half out of every 24 hours are spent waiting. Waiting? Yes, the more you wait, the less there is to wait for. Oh? And that goes on for days and days and weeks and months, years, years. First thing you know, all the years are dead, all the minutes are dead, you yourself, dead. Nothing left to wait for anymore, nothing but minutes on the clock. No time of life, nothing but minutes and idiocy. Beautiful, bright, intelligent idiocy. Does that answer your question? Yes. I'm afraid it does. Thank you. You shouldn't have gone to all the trouble. No trouble. At all. You have children? Yes. Two. A son and a daughter. Oh, swell. Do they look like you? Yes. Why are you sad? I was always sad. It's just that after I was married, I was allowed to drink. waiting for? No one. I'm not waiting for anybody either. A husband, of course. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, sure. He's a lawyer. No, he's a great guy. I like him. I am very fond of him. <laughs> Would you like to dance? All right. I'm sorry, I don't dance. <laughs> no? Well, I didn't think you'd like to. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I don't like to dance at all. I can hardly walk. You mean you're tight? No, I mean all the time. Were you ever in Paris? In 1929 and again in 1934. <laughs> what month of 1934? Most of April, all of May. And little of June. I was there November and December that year. Well, we were there almost at the same time. You were married. Engaged. Are you really in love with me? Yes. Is it the champagne? Yes, partly at least. If you don't see me again, will you be very unhappy? Very. I'm so pleased. I must go now. Please don't get up. Mister? How many you got this time? Eleven. Hey, mister, do you own this place? I own this place. Can you use a great lyric tenor? Great lyric tenor. Who? Me. What's lyric about you? My voice. All right, then, sing. When I reach our dark morning, answers lie so warm and sweet, is a little violet laughter you can hear. Sing. 
hear you again about a year from now. Honest? Yeah, long about November 7th, 1940. Did you hear it too, mister? Yes, and it's great. What part of Greece? The Monica. Gosh, thanks, mister. And don't wait a year. Come back a little later with some papers. You are a great singer. Oh, thanks, mister. So long. Thanks, mister. Oh, oh, no, you don't understand what I mean. Hi, Joe. Hello, Crook. Hi, Joe. Two beers, Nick. All I do is carry out orders. Carry out orders. I don't know what the idea is behind the order, who it's for, who it's against, or why. All I do is carry it out. You don't read enough. I do read. I read the examiner every morning and the call bulletin every night and carry out orders. What are the orders now? To keep the peace down here at the waterfront. Keep it for who, right? Right. How do I know for who? The peace. Just keep it. It's got to be kept for somebody. Who would you suspect it's kept for? Citizens. I'm a citizen. All right, I'm keeping it for you. By hitting me over the head with a club, right? I don't know. We went to Mission High together. We've always been good friends. The only time we ever fought was that time over Alma Haggerty. Did you marry Alma Haggerty, right? Everything is right. No, did you? Joe, are you with me or against me? I'm with everybody, one at a time. No, and that's just what I mean. You mean neither one of us is going to marry the thing we're fighting for? <laughs> I don't even know what it is. It's so simple, it's fantastic. All right, what are you fighting for? For the rights of the inferior, right? Something like that. Yeah, you're not inferior. I'm a longshoreman and an idealist. I'm a man with too much brawn to actual exclusively. I married a small, sensitive, cultured woman so that my kids would be sissies instead of suckers. A strong man with any sensibility has no choice in this world but to be a heel or a worker. I haven't the heart to be a heel, so I'm a worker. I got a son who's already thinking about being a writer. I wanted to be a writer once. Wonderful. They all wanted to be writers. Every maniac in the world that ever brought about the murder of people through war started out in an attic or a basement writing poetry. It stank, so they got even by becoming important heels. And it's still going on. Is it really, Joe? Look at today's paper. Right now on Telegraph Hill is some punk who is trying to be Shakespeare. Ten years from now, he'll be a senator. Or a communist. <laughs> Mac, you ought to be a writer yourself. I hate the tribe. They're mischief makers. Right? Everything is right. Right and wrong. Language is all right. The people who use language that are lousy. What do you think, brother? No foundation. All the way down the line. What, what not, nothing. I go walk and to look at sky. What, what not, what's that mean? What, what not? That means this side, that side. Inhale, exhale. What birth, what not death. The inevitable, the astounding, the magnificent seed of growth and decay in all things, beginning and end. That man, in his own way, is a prophet. He is one who, with the help of deer, is able to reach that state of deep understanding in which the what, the what not, the reasonable and the unreasonable are one. Right. If you can understand that kind of talk, how can you be a longshoreman? I come from a long line of McCarthy's who never married or slept with anything but the most powerful and quarrelsome flesh. You sure can, Phyllis. Boy, you can talk. I wouldn't talk this way to anyone but a man in uniform. The man who couldn't understand a word of what I was saying. The party I'm speaking of, my friend, is you. Here, here, what do you think you're doing? Um, I just got out here for a new dance. I'm trying it out. Is Nick phone ringing? Has he got a right to do that? The living have danced from the beginning of time. I might even say that the life and the dance have moved along together. So now we have... Go into your dance, son. Show us what we have. Well, I haven't got it worked out completely yet. It starts out like this. Next, Pacific Street Restaurant, Saloon, and Entertainment Palace. Good afternoon. Nick speaking. Who? Sarah Dudley Bostwick in the... Hello? Elsie? You're coming down. She's coming down. No, I won't drink. Oh, gosh, Elsie. Splendid. Great. Then, I work along into this. And 
here is where I really get going. Excellent. A most satisfying demonstration of the present state of the American body and soul. Son, you're a genius. Yeah. Where'd you learn to dance? I never had a lesson in my life. I'm a natural born dancer and comedian too. You can make people laugh? I can be funny, but they won't laugh. That's odd, why not? I don't know, they just won't laugh. Would you care to be funny now? I'd like to try out a new monologue I've been thinking about. Please do, I promise you. If it's funny, I shall roar with laughter. <laughs> this is it. I'm up at Sharky's on Turk Street. It's a quarter to nine, daylight saving, Wednesday the 11th. What I got's a headache and a 1918 nickel. What I want's a cup of coffee. If I buy a cup of coffee with a nickel, I gotta walk home. I got an eight ball problem. George the Greek is shooting a game of snooker with Pedro the Filipino. I'm in rags. They're wearing $35 suits made to order. I haven't got a cigarette. They're smoking Bobby Burns Panatellas. I'm thinking it over, like I always do. George the Greek is in a tough spot. If I buy a cup of coffee, I want another cup. What happens? My ear aches. My ear. George the Greek takes the cue, chalks it, studies the table, touches the cue ball delicately. What happens? He makes the three ball. What do I do? I get confused. I go out and buy a morning paper. Now, what the hell do I want with a morning paper? What I want is a cup of coffee and a good used car. <laughs> I go out and buy a morning paper. Thursday, the 12th. Hey, maybe the headline's about me. I take a quick look. No, the headline's not about me. It's about Hitler, 7,000 miles away. I'm here. Who the hell's Hitler? Who's behind the eight ball? I turn around. Everybody's behind the eight ball. <laughs> the funniest thing I've ever heard, or seen for that matter. Well, then why don't you laugh? I don't know, yet. See, I'm always getting funny ideas that nobody will laugh at. Maybe that you've stumbled headlong into a new kind of comedy. <laughs> yeah, but what good is it if it doesn't make anybody laugh? There are kinds of laughter, son. I must say, in all truth, that I am laughing, although not out loud. Oh, but I want to hear people laugh out loud. That's why I keep thinking of funny things to say. Well, they may catch on in time. Let's go, Crump. So long, Joe. Oh. Hey, Nick. Yeah? That McCarthy in the last race. You're crazy. That horse is a no good double. Bet everything you got on I'm McCarthy. I'm not betting a nickel on him. You bet everything you've got on McCarthy. I don't need money. What makes you think McCarthy's gonna win? McCarthy's name's McCarthy, isn't it? Yeah, so what? All right, so a horse named McCarthy's gonna win in the last race. That's all today. Why? You do what I tell you, and everything will be all right. McCarthy likes to talk. That's all. What's the matter? Here's your five, Joe. I'm in trouble again. What's eating you? I want you to go on an errand for me. What about her? She's up in her room crying. What's she crying about? I don't know. I couldn't understand anything. She kept crying and telling me about a big house and collie dogs all around and flowers and one of her brothers is dead and another one lost somewhere, Joe. I can't stand Kitty crying. You want to marry the girl? Yeah. Why? I don't know why exactly, Joe. Joe, I don't like to think about Kitty out in the streets. I guess I love her, that's all. She's a nice girl. She's like an angel. 
She's not like those other streetwalkers. Here. Take all this money, run next door to Frankie's, and bet it on the nose of McCarthy. All this money, Joe McCarthy? Get going. Joe McCarthy wins. We'll be rich. Hurry up, will you? No, family, son. All the way down the line. McCarthy? Just because you get a little lucky this morning, you've got to go to work and throw away 80 bucks. He wants to marry her. What if she doesn't want to marry him? Oh, yeah. Now, why wouldn't she want to marry a nice guy like Tom? She's been in burlesque. She's had flowers sent to her by European royalty. She's dined with men of wealth and social position. She's above Tom. They were running when I got there. Frankie wouldn't take the bet. McCarthy didn't get a call to the stretch. I thought we were going to save all this money. Then McCarthy won by two lengths. <laughs> For the love of Mike. What'd he pay, 15 to 1? Better. But Frankie wouldn't take the bet. I'll give you the money. We would have had about $1,500. Look, I want you to go up to Schwabacher Fries. Get me the biggest Rand McNally map of the nations of Europe they've got. And on your way back, stop at one of those pawn shops on 3rd Street, buy me a good revolver and some cartridges. He's up in a room crying. Go get me those things. What are you going to do, study the map and then go out and shoot somebody? Read the names of some European towns and rivers and valleys and mountains. Joe, you got something on your mind. Don't go through with the revolver. Sure is a good one, Tom. Don't pay more than 10 bucks. Joe? Yeah. What do you send me out for crazy things for all the time? Not crazy, Tom. Now get going. What about Kitty? Let her cry. It'll do her good. She comes in here while I'm gone. Talk to her, will you, Joe? Tell her about me. Okay, get going. And don't load that gun. Just buy it and bring it here. Don't catch me loading any gun. Take these toys away. Where will I take them? Give them to some kid. No. Take them up to Kitty. Toys stopped me from crying once. That's the reason I had you buy them. I wanted to figure out why they stopped me from crying. I remember they seemed awfully stupid at the time. Shall I, Joe? Take them up to Kitty. You think they'd stop her from crying? They might. You get curious about the way they work, and you forget whatever it is you're remembering is making you cry. That's what they're for. Yeah, sure. Girl at the store asked me what I wanted with toys. I'll take them up to Kitty. She's like a little girl. Hey, Nick. Yeah. Can I play the piano again? Sure, practice all you like until I tell you to stop. Huh, Nick? Are you gonna pay me for playing the piano? Sure, I'll give you enough to get by on. Get money for playing the piano. What were you crying about? My mother. And what about her? She was dead. I stopped crying when they brought me the toys. What do you want with that gun? I study things, Nick. Murphy is your name. Just old Trevor. Mind if I sit down to your life? <coughs> Drink. Beer. Same as I've been drinking and thanks, son. Thank you. Here's to you. I don't suppose you ever fell in love with a midget weighing 39 pounds. No, I can't say as I have, no. but have another beer. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Down in Gallup, 20 years ago, a fellow by the name of Rufus Jenkins come to town with six white horses and two black ones. Said he wanted a man to break the horses for him because his left leg was wood, see, and he couldn't do it. Had a meet at Parker's Mercantile store, finally came to blows. Me and Henry Wopel bashed his head with a brass cuspidor and ran away to Mexico. <laughs> but he didn't die. No, no, no. You were saying a 39-pound mission? Oh, will I ever forget that lady? Will I ever get over that Amazon of small proportions? Excuse me, ma'am. <laughs> will you? If I live to be 60. 60. You look more than 60 now. That's trouble showing on my face, son. That's troubles and complications. I was 58 three months ago. Have another beer. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Did you ever try to herd cattle on a bicycle? No, I never got around to that. Left Houston with 60 cents in my pocket. Gift of a girl named Lucinda. Walked 14 miles in 14 hours. Big house with barbed wire all around and big dogs. Woof. One thing I never could get around. Walk past that gate anyway, from hunger and thirst. Dogs jumped up and come for me. <laughs> Walked right into them, growing older every second. Went up to the door and knocked. 
big negress opened the door, closed it quick, said, on your way, white trash, you are not again. On your way again. On your way again. This time, the old man himself opened that door, 90 if he was a day. Sawed off shotgun to said, I ain't looking for trouble. My name is Kavanaugh. I'm hungry and thirsty. Took me in, made mint juleps for the two of us. <laughs> said, living here alone, father. Said, drink and ask no questions. Maybe I am and maybe I ain't. You saw the lady draw your conclusions. Well, I had heard of that, but didn't wink out of tact. Now, if I told you that old southern gentleman was my grandfather, you wouldn't believe me, would you? I might. Well, it just so happened that he wasn't. <laughs> well, it would have been romantic if he had been, though, huh? Where'd you heard cattle on a bicycle? Uh, Toledo, Ohio, 1918. Toledo, Ohio. They don't herd cattle in Toledo, Ohio. They don't anymore. Oh. They did in 1918. One fella did a lease a ways, a bookkeeper named Sam Gold, straight from the east side of New York. Some rare old. Lariat, Bull Durham, two head of cattle and two bicycles. <laughs> Called his place the Gold Bar Ranch. Two acres, just outside the city limits. Uh, that year, the war. Uh, do you remember the war? Yeah, I remember the war, but how did you herd them two cows on a bicycle? Oh, easiest thing in the world. Rode no hands. Oh. Had to. Otherwise, you couldn't lasso the cows. Right. See, work for Sam Gold till the cows ran away. Bicycles scared them. They went into Toledo, never saw hide nor hair of them again, advertised in every paper, uh, never got them back, uh, uh, broke his heart, uh, sold both bikes and returned to New York. <laughs> Took four aces from a deck of red cards and walked to town. Poker, see. A fella in the game name of Chuck Collins, like to gamble, told him with a smile, I don't suppose you would care to bet $100 that I won't hold four aces in the next town, he called it. <laughs> My card was red on the blank side. You see, the other card was blue. <laughs> I plump forgot about it. I showed him four aces, ace of spades, ace of diamonds, ace of hearts, ace of clubs. I'll remember them four cards if I lived to be 60. <laughs> would have been killed on the spot. Except for a hurricane that year. A uh, hurricane. Oh, now. You ain't forgotten the Toledo hurricane in 1918, have you? There was no hurricane in Toledo in 1918 or in any other year. Well, for the love of God, yeah. what do you suppose all that commotion was? <laughs> and how come I come to in Chicago dream walking down State Street? I guess they scared you. No. Oh. Oh, that wasn't it. I think if you go back to the newspapers of November 1918, you will see there was a hurricane in Toledo. I remember sitting on top of a two-story house floating northwest. Northwest. Now, son, don't tell me that you don't believe me either. Well, of course I believe you. Living is an art. It's not bookkeeping. It takes a lot of rehearsing for a man to get to be himself. You're the first man I ever met who believes well, me. have another beer. Thanks. Nick. Thanks. Mr. Nick. Did you give her the toys? Oh, yeah, I gave them to her. She stopped crying. Oh, uh, no, she started crying harder than ever. I brought her with me. You ought to see the crazy room she lives in. It's bad, Joe. Don't cry anymore, Kitty. I don't like this life. Look, Joe, Kitty gave me a picture of herself when she was a little girl. Gee, you're pretty, Kitty. Tom? Yeah, Kitty? Tom, when you were a little boy, what did you want to be? What, Kitty? Do you remember when you were a little boy? Yeah, I remember sometimes, Kitty. What did you want to be? Sometimes I want to be a locomotive engineer, sometimes a policeman. I wanted to be a great actress. Tom, didn't you ever want to be a doctor? Yeah. Now I remember. Sure, Kitty, I wanted to be a doctor. Oh. Huh? I'm so glad. Because I wanted to be an actress. 
and have a young doctor come to the theater and see me and fall in love with me and send me flowers. Oh, I would do that, kid. I wouldn't know who he was. And then one day, I would see him in the street and fall in love with him. I wouldn't know he was the one who was in love with me. Oh, I think about him all the time. I dream about him. I dream about being near him the rest of my life. I dreamed of having children who looked just like him. I wouldn't be an actress all the time. Just until I found him and fell in love with him. After that, we'd take a train and we'd go to beautiful cities and see wonderful people everywhere and give money to the poor. And whenever people were sick, he would go to them and make them well again. Talk to her, Tom. Be the wonderful young doctor she dreamed about and never found. Go ahead. Correct the errors in the world. Joe, I don't know what to say. Boy. Oh, the most beautiful lay in the world, huh? Hey, don't go any farther. You? No, not you. Kitty, you stink. Hey, don't you dare talk to me that way, you pickpocket. Oh, 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 I see. You want to get tough, huh? Well, go on. Get out of here. Go hide someplace. Pickpocket! Where's Kitty? Where's Kitty? Oh, where's Kitty? 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 Oh, no, no, Tom, Tom, they stay here with Kitty. I'm going down to Union Square to hire an automobile. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. We'll ride out to the beach and watch the sun go down. Then we'll ride out the great highway to Half Moon Bay. And we'll have supper down there, and you and Kitty can dance. Joe? What? You mean you're going to go on an errand for me? You mean you're not going to send me? That's right. Joe, I never did tell you. You're a different kind of guy. Don't be silly. I don't understand things I'm trying to understand. I'm 58 years old. I've been through three wars, married four times, father of countless children whose names I don't even know. I've got no money. I live from hand to mouth. But if there's anything I can do, name it, and I will do it. Listen, Pop, for the moment, could you sit down and go back to sleep for me? Oh, I can do that, too. Yeah. Who? I see. Why don't you leave them alone? The church people, well, to hell with the church people. I'm a Catholic myself. All right. All right, I'll send them away. I'll tell them to lay low for a couple of days. Yes, I know how it is. What? Listen, I don't like that Blick. He wasn't here this afternoon, and I told him not to come back. I'll keep the girls out of here, but you keep Blick out of here. I know his brother-in-law is important, but I still don't want him coming down here. He looks for trouble everywhere, and he always finds it. Yes, I'll keep them out. You just see that Blick doesn't come around and start something, okay? Ooh, trouble coming. It's that lousy vice squad again. It's that gorilla Blick. Anybody at all, you can count on me. Oh, 
What kind of gorilla is this gorilla Blake? Very dignified. Toenails on his fingers. Ooh. You're broke, aren't you? Always. Always. All right, go into the kitchen and give Sam a hand. Eat some food. When you come back, you can have a couple of beers. Anybody at all, you can count on me. I know a good man when I see Sam. Him. I'm sorry. So many people are sick. Last night a little boy... I love you. Elsie, you'll never know how glad I am to see you. Just to see you. I was afraid I'd never see you again. It was driving me crazy. I didn't want to live, honest. No, you told me before, but I can't help it, Elsie. I love you. Love is for birds. They have wings to fly away on when it's time for flying. For tigers in the jungle, because they don't know their end. We know our end. Every night I watch over poor dying men. I hear them breathing, crying, talking in their sleep, crying for air and water and love. We can never know love or greatness. We should know both. Elsie, I love you. All right, Dudley. We'll try again. We'll go together to a room in a cheap hotel and dream that the world is beautiful and that living is full of love and greatness. But in the morning, can we forget debts and duties and the cost of ridiculous things? Sure we can, Elsie. Hey, Nick, what the hell kind of joint are you running? It's not out of the world. It's on a street in the city. People come and go, and they say what they must say. Floozies like her that raise hell with our racket. Oh, yeah. Finnegan telephoned. Spend your time at the movies for the next couple of days. Oh, they're all lousy. All about love. Yeah, well, lousy or not lousy, for a couple of days, the Flatfoots are going to be romancing you, so stay out of here and lay low. Okay, get going. We was just going. We was formerly models at Magnum. <laughs> Strike isn't enough, so they got to put us on the tails of the girls, too. I don't know. You know, I wish to God I was back in the sunset, holding the hands of kids going home from school, where I belong. I don't like trouble. Give me a beer. Right now, McCarthy, my best friend, he's with 60 strikers who want to stop the Finks who are going to try and unload the Mary Luckenbach tonight. Why the hell McCarthy ever became a longshoreman instead of a professor of some kind? Something I'll never know. Cowboys and Indians, cops and robbers, longshoremen and Finks. You know, I've been thinking everything over, Nick. You know what I think? No, what? I think we're all crazy. And we've got everything. We always feel lousy and dissatisfied, just the same. Of course we're crazy, but even so, we've got to go on living together. No, there's no hope. I don't suppose it's right for an officer of the law to feel the way I feel. By God, right or not right, that's how I feel. I mean, why are we all so lousy? This is a nice world. So why do they make all the trouble? I don't know why. We're crazy, that's why. We're no good anymore. Nick, I'm gonna quit being a cop. Well, let somebody else keep law and order. The stuff I hear about at headquarters. I'm 37 years old. I still can't get used to it. 
Let me cuddle his wife will raise hell. Ah, the wife. Oh, oh she's a wonderful <laughs> woman, Nick. We got two of the swellest boys in the world, 12 and 7 years old. I didn't know that. Oh, sure. What'll I do? You know, I've wanted to quit for seven years. I wanted to quit the day they began putting me through that school. But I didn't quit. What'll I do if I quit? Where's money gonna be coming in from? Ah, now that's one of the reasons that we're all crazy, because we don't know where it's gonna be coming in from, except from where it happens to be coming in from at the time, which we usually don't like. You know, every once in a while, I catch myself being mean and hating people just because they're down and out, broke, hungry, sick, or drunk. And then when I'm with the stuffed shirts at headquarters, all of a sudden, I'm nice to them, trying to make an impression. On who? People I don't like. I feel disgusted. No, oh, I'm gonna quit, that's all. Quit out. I'm gonna give them back the uniform and all the gadgets that go with it. I don't want any part of it. I mean, this is a good world, so what the hell do they want to make all the trouble for all the time? No fun, do something. All the way down the line. What? No fun, do something. No foundation. Yeah, I'll say there's no foundation. All the way down the line. Is that all he ever says? It's all he's been saying this week. What is he, anyway? He's an Arab, something like that. No, I mean, what's he do for a living? What do you do for a living, brother? Work. All my life, work. From small boy to old man, work in old country, work in new country, work in New York, Pittsburgh, Detroit, Chicago, Imperial Valley, San Francisco, work, no beg, work. For what? Nothing. Three boys in the old country. Twenty years not see. Lost. Dead. Who knows? What? What not? No foundation. All the way down the line. What did he say last week? Didn't say anything, played the harmonica. Old country song. I play. Seems like a nice guy. Nicest guy in the world. Yeah, but crazy, just like all the rest of us. Stark raving mad. You hear that? That's something. I want to sing to that. I can't sing. Try and play to that. I'll try to dance. Well, anyway, Nick. I said, uh, forget it. Sure. Gets me down once in a while. No harm in talking. Now keep the girls out of here. Take it easy. Czechoslovakia. Little, lovely, lonely Czechoslovakia. I wonder what kind of place Priver was. Priver! Priver! What's the matter with him? Drunk. Who are you calling, Joe? Priver. Priver. Is it 
Czech and a Slav, a Czechoslovakian. How interesting. He's drunk. Tom Driver is the city of Czechoslovakia. Oh. You sure were nice to her, Joe. Kitty Duval, she is one of the finest people in the world. Sure was nice of you to hire an automobile and take us for a drive along the ocean front down to Half Moon Bay. Those three hours are the most delightful, the most somber, the most beautiful I have ever known. Joe? Yes? You won't get sore or anything. What is it, Tom? Joe, where do you get all that money? You pay for the automobile. You pay for supper and two bottles of champagne at the Half Moon Bay restaurant. You move Kitty out of the New York Hotel, around the corner to the St. Francis Hotel on Powell Street. I saw you pay her room rent. I, I saw you give her money for new clothes. Where do you get all that money, Joe? Three years from now, I've never asked. All right, Tom, don't be a fool. Listen carefully. If anybody's got any money to hoard or throw away, you can be sure that he stole it from other people. Uh, not from rich people who can spare it, but from poor people who can. From their lives and from their dreams. I'm no exception. And I've got money. I'll always have money as long as this world stays the way it is. I don't work. I don't make anything. I drink. You see, I decided to get even on the world. Well, you can't enjoy living unless you work, unless you do something. I don't do anything anymore. I don't want to do anything anymore. There isn't anything I can do that won't make me feel embarrassed because you see Tom I can't do simple good things I haven't the patience and I am too smart money is the guiltiest thing in the world it stinks don't you ever bother me about it again I didn't mean to make you feel bad Joe. here take this gun out into the street and give it to some worthy hold-up man what's he saying you asked me to take you to a honky-tonk. Well, this is a honky-tonk. Married 18 years, and she's still looking for adventure. Joe, I might give to the wrong kind of guy. He might do something crazy. All right, I'll find somebody myself. Now, look, I'm going to give you some money. I want you to get me this week's Life, Liberty, Time, and six or seven packages of chewing gum. Life, Liberty, Time, six or seven packages of chewing gum. That's right. All of that gum, what kind? Any kind. Mix them up. Get all the kinds. Licorice, too? Licorice, by all means. Juicy fruit? Juicy fruit. Tutti Fruity? Is there such a gun? I think so. All right, get Tutti Fruity, too. Get all the kinds. Get as many kinds as they're selling. Life, liberty time, all different kinds of guys. And get some jelly beans, too. All the different colors. All right, Joe. And the longest right. Panatella cigar you can find. Six of them. Panatella? I got give it. Give a dollar right. to a news kid. Dollar give some old man a dollar. Okay, Joe. And give those Salvation Army people out in the street a couple of dollars and ask them to sing a song that goes like this. Let the lower lights be burning. Send a gleam across the way. Let the lower lights be burning. Send a gleam across the way. Painting, struggling, painting, seamen. You may rescue, you may save. Let the lower lights be burning. Liberty time, all different kinds of gum they're selling. Jelly beans, panatella cigars, right. dollar for a news kid, dollar for old man, two dollars, South Asian Army, let the lower lights be burning, send a gleam across you the got it, Tommy! He's Tommy. absolutely insane. You asked me to take you to a honky-tonk instead of to the Mark Hopkins. You're here in a honky-tonk. I can't help it if he's crazy. Do you want to go back to where people aren't crazy? No, not just yet. Well, all right, then. Don't be telling me every minute that he's crazy. Be happy about it. Presbyterian. Oh, I take you to Presbyterian <laughs> Sunday school. Found a singer. Well, on occasion, have a drink. Thanks. Get a glass. Hey. Sit down.
respond to that song. I used to sing it at the top of my voice. I never saved a semen in my life. I saved a semen once. Yeah. Well, it wasn't exactly a semen. It's a little darky named Wellington. Oh. Heavy set sort of fella with a nice personality. No friends to speak of. Not till I come along, at any rate. That was in New Orleans. Summer of the year 1890. No, 90. Oh, it's 98. I was a lot younger, of course, and had no mustache. But I was regarded by many people as a man of means. Do you know anything about guns? All there is to know. I didn't fight the Ojibwe's for nothing. Up there in Lake Takaluka country in Michigan, long around 1881 or two, see. Fought them right up to the shore of the lake. Made them swim for Canada. One fellow in particular, Indian named Harry Daisy. What sort of gun would you say this is? Any good? Yeah, yeah. That looks like a pretty nice hunk of shooting iron. Yeah, that's a six-shooter, see? I shot a man with a six-shooter once. I got him through the palm of his right hand. Lifted his arm to wave to a friend. Thought it was a bird. A fella named Carraway. Laramore Carraway. You know how to work one of these things. <laughs> know how to work it? <laughs> Hand me that little gun, son. I'll show you all about it. Now, let's see here. Uh, this is probably a new kind of six-shooter. It's after my time. I ain't nicked an Indian in years, you see. I believe this here place is supposed to move out of... Oh, that's it. There it is. Uh, look all right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got a good gun there, son. Yeah. I'll explain it to you. You see them holes? Yeah. Well, that's where you put the cartridges. Here. Them holes. Show me how it's done. Well, son, you uh, take them, see? One at a time, and you put them into the holes, like this. There's one. There's two. There's three. And there's four. There's five. There's six. Then you get the barrel back into place, see? Then... And all you got to do is cock it, name, and fire. Is it all set? It's ready to kill. Oh, let me hold Yo, it. careful now, son, careful. Many a man has lost an eye fooling with a loaded gun. Not now, no, hold on. Now, hold on. A fella I used to know named Danny Donovan lost a nose, ruined his whole life. Just give me now, the... hold it firm. Now, right. yeah, hold it firm. Squeeze the trigger. Don't snap it. It spoils your aim. Thanks. Let's see if I can unload it. Of course you can. Of course you can. Well, thanks. I, I'm mighty grateful to you. you. You know, I always wanted to see one of these things close up. Are you sure it's a good one? It's a beaut. Bang. Oh, boy! Well, well, there you are, Nick! Thought I couldn't do it, eh? Now watch. One, two, three, four, five, six. How's that? I knew I could do it. Six nickels. Took me a little while, but I finally did it. It's scientific, really. With a little skill, a man can make a modest living beating the marble games. Oh, not that that's what I want to do. I just don't like the idea of anything getting the best of me, machine or anything else. Myself, I'm the kind of guy who makes up his mind to do something and then goes to work and does it. There's no other way a man can be a success in anything. See that letter? That don't stand for some little bitty high school somewhere. That stands for me, for Ruli. Willie for Ruli. I'm an Assyrian. We got a civilization six or seven centuries old, I think. Somewhere along in there. You ever hear of Osman? Harold Osman? He's an Assyrian too. He's got an orchestra down in Fresno. I never seen you before in my life. But I can tell from the clothes you wear and the company you keep that you're a man who looks every problem straight in the eye and then goes to work and solves it. I'm that way myself. Well, it's been wonderful talking to a nicer type of people for a change. Well, I'll be seeing you. So long. Bye, lady. You got a good man there. 
Take good care of him. Did you get it all? Yeah, I'll go find the jelly beans. These are the jelly beans. Take a look beans. at them. Yep, same as ever. Have some. Thanks. I remember the first time I ever had jelly beans. Mm. I must have been six, or at the most seven. Yeah. 1877, or seven or eight. Baltimore. Have some time. Me and a boy named Clark, Quinton Clark, became a senator. Yeah. A Senator Clark. Take a look at this gun. Yeah, tutti frutti, all right. Tutti frutti. Oh, <laughs> Tom, I always wanted to see how many of these I could chew at one time. I'll tell you what. I'll bet I can chew more at one time than you can. Oh. All right! All right, now. I'll referee. How many you got in your mouth? Six. All right, now. Let Tommy catch up with you. You give a dollar to a news kid. Yep. What do you say? Thanks. What kind of kid was he? A little dark kid. I guess he was Italian. Did he seem pleased? Yeah. Good. You give a dollar to an old man? Yep. Was he pleased? Yep. Good. How many you got in your mouth? Six. six. I got six, six. All right, now. Seven. Seven, Seven each. Eight. Nine. Ten. I always wanted to do this. <laughs> Let's see what's going on in the world. Eleven. Twelve. Yep. Yeah. What you move key in the St. Francis Hotel for? Uh, don't worry about it, Tom. She'll be all right. Oh, no. Don't you think she'll get lonely up there with nobody to talk to? There's nobody anywhere for her to talk to except you. Me, though. Yeah, you. By the grace of God, you're the other half of that girl. Not the angry woman that swaggers into this waterfront dive and shouts because the world has kicked her around. Anybody can have her. You belong to little kid in Ohio who once dreamed of living. I put her in that hotel so she'd have a chance to gather herself together again. They all make her talk like a whore. After a while, she'll believe them. She'll get lonely, sure. I want her to go on being lonely for you so she can come together the way she was meant to be from the beginning. Loneliness is good for people. Right now, it's the only thing for Kitty. Thank you. Any more licorice? Licorice? Uh -huh. We chewed all the licorice in. We still got beef nuts, tea berry, juicy fruit, and cold. Uh, licorice used to be my favorite flavor. Sure Don't worry about it, Tom. She'll be all right. You really want to marry the girl. Honest to God, Joe. Only I haven't got any money. Uh, couldn't you be a prize fighter or something like that? Nah. I couldn't hit a man if I wasn't sore at him. He'd have to do something that made me hate him. Uh, must be something you can do that you won't mind doing very much. Which I could do. Thank you. Tom, would you be embarrassed driving a truck? Oh, I never thought of that. I'd like that. Travel, highways, little towns, coffee and hotcakes, beautiful valleys. Mountains and streams and trees and daybreak and sunset. There is poetry in the that. <laughs> Could Kitty go with me sometime? I don't know why not. Go get me the phone book. 24, 24. Yeah, Tommy. Do you know how to drive a truck? No, I can drive a truck or anything with a motor and wheel. Here it is. Tuxedo 7900. Now, here's a nickel. Go get me that number. Hello? Ask for Mr. Keith. I'd like to talk to Mr. Keith, please. Mr. Keith. Tom, take the gum out of your mouth. Mr. Keith, that's right. Hello, Mr. Keith? Yeah. Tom, tell him to hold the line. Hold the line, please. Tom, will you give me a hand, please? <clears throat> Hello, Keith. Joe. Yeah. Fine. Forget it. Listen, you got a 
place for a good driver? Well, I don't know. I don't think so. You haven't got a driver's license, have you? No, but I can get one, Joe. No, but he can get one easily enough. Well, to hell with the union. He'll join later. Yeah, join later. All right. Say he's a vice president and that he drives for relaxation. <laughs> sure, what do you mean? Tonight. Well, I don't know why not. San Diego? All right, let him start driving without a license. What the hell's the difference? Yeah, fine. You take a look at him. Yeah, I'll send him over. Right. Thanks. Am I gonna get the job? He wants to take a look at you. How do I look, Joe? Hold up your head. Stick out your chest. How do you feel? Fine. Now you look fine, too. 27, 27. <laughs> Tom, you win. <laughs> Congratulations. Here, have yourself a pleasant smoke and give those slummers one each. Light the lady's cigar. I'm paying commission. What do you think you're doing? I'd really like to, dear. Oh, this is too much. I'd really, really like to, dear. Mother of five, and she's still looking for romance. <laughs> no. I forbid it. Look, what's the matter with you? Why don't you leave her alone? What are you always pushing your women around for? Now, look, Tom, here's 10 bucks. 10 bucks? Yeah. He may want you to get into a truck and start driving to San Diego tonight. Joe, sure, I gotta tell Kitty. I'll tell her. Joe? Sure? Yeah. To take care of her. You don't worry about her. She's in the St. Francis Hotel. <laughs> now, look, take a cab to Townsend and Fort. Townsend You'll see a Fort. big sign there. It says Keith Motor Transport Motor Company. Company. They'll be waiting for you. Great, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Oh, I silly. Didn't... Get going. Where the hell have you been? We've got to have some entertainment around here. Can't you see these fine people from uptown? We were just down to Pier 27. One of the cops and a longshoreman had a fight, and the cop hit him over the head with a blackjack. We saw it happen. We were we... standing there looking when it happened. Them poor cops. I'm able to get nervous and shoot somebody. All right, I want you to tend bar for a while. I'm going to take a walk over to the pier. Yes, sir. You society people make up your minds yet? Have you champagne? Yeah, what do you think he's been pouring out of that bottle? Water or something? Have you a chill bottle? <laughs> yeah, I've got a dozen of them chilled, you know? He's been drinking champagne all day and all night here for a month now. May we have a bottle? It's six dollars. I think we can manage. I don't know. I know, I don't know. Rattle the keys a little, son. Rattle the keys. seeing you again. I came in a cab. You've been crying. Bring us a glass. I've got to talk to you. Have a drink. I was never in burlesque. We were just poor. Sit down, Kitty. I tried other things. Sorry. Here's to you. Katerina Koronovsky. Here's to you and Tom. Where is Tom? He's getting a job tonight driving a truck. He'll be back in a couple of days. I told him I'd marry him. He wanted to see you and say goodbye. Tom is too good for me. He's like a little boy. I'm... Too many things have happened to me. Kitty Duval, you're one of the few truly innocent people I have ever known. Now, 
He'll be back in a couple of days, go back to the hotel and wait for That's you. That's what I mean. I can't stand being alone. I'm no good. I tried very hard. I don't know what it is. I'm Miss... You really want to come back here, Kitty? I don't know. I'm not sure. Everything smells different. I don't know how to feel or what to think. I know I don't belong there. It's what I've wanted my whole life, but it's too late. I try to be happy about it, but all I can do is re remember everything and cry. I don't know what to tell you. I didn't mean to hurt you. <laughs> Joe, you haven't hurt me. You're the only one that's ever been any good to me. I've never known anyone like you. I don't know about love anymore. But I know I love you. And I know I love Tom. Love you too, Kitty Duvall. He'll want babies. I know he will. I know I will too. Of course I will. I can't. Tom is a baby himself. He'll be very happy together. He wants you to ride with him in the truck. Tom is good for you. You're good for Tom. Do you want me to go back and wait for him? I can't tell you what to do, Kitty. I think it would be a good idea. I wish I could tell you how it makes me feel to be alone. It's almost worse. Might take a whole week, Kitty. Didn't you speak of reading a book, a book of poems? I didn't know what I was saying. Well, of course you know. I think you'd like poetry. Wait here a minute, Kitty. I'll see if I can find you some books. All right, Joe. No foundation. What? No foundation. No foundation? How do you figure? Paper, mister? Your name, sister? Kitty Duval. What's it to you? If you don't give me any gutter lip, just answer my question. You go to hell, you. Where do you live? The New York Hotel, room 21. Where do you work? I'm not working just now. I'm looking for work. Hmm. What kind of work do you do? What kind of work do you do? What kind of work do you do? You can't talk to a lady like that in my presence. Now, hold on here. Now, hold on. You ain't got no right to go hurting people. Why do you want to know
answer my question. What kind of work? I'm a whore, you son of a bitch. You know what kind of work I do, and I know what kind you do. Excuse me, officer, but it seems to me that your attitude is... is making the poor child say things that are not true. I said, shut up. Well, are you going to stand for such insolence? Are you? I'll get a divorce. I'll start life over again. Come on, get the hell out of here! Just get out! Oh, no, you... Damn it, you bitch! Now, let's begin again. So that you tell the truth. What's your name? Kitty Duval. Where do you live? Until this evening, I lived at the New York Hotel, room 21. This evening, I moved to the St. Francis Hotel. St. Francis Hotel? Nice place. Where do you work? I'm looking for work. What kind of work do you do? I'm an actress. I see. What movies have I seen you in? I've worked in burlesque. You're a liar. It's the truth. Now, what are you doing here? I came here to see if I could get a job. Doing what? Singing and dancing. You can't sing or dance. What are you lying for? I can. I sang and danced in burlesque all over the country. You're a liar. I said lines, too. All right. You danced in burlesque. Yes. Let's see what you did. I can't. Hmm. Uh, there's no music. I, I haven't got on the right clothes. There's music. Put a nickel in that phonograph. Put a nickel on that phonograph. All right. Get up on that stage and do a hot little burlesque number. Get going. Let's see you dance the way you did in burlesque all over the country. Won't even shoot once. Rick! I told you to stay out of here, now you get out of here! You 
you come back in here, I'm gonna take you into that room where you've been beating up that boy, and I'm gonna murder you slowly with my hands. Now beat it. Go take care of the boy. This is the only country in the world. If you ask me, nuts to Europe. Hey, Nick, something's wrong. Paper, mister. Joe, Blick's dead. Somebody just shot him. None of the cops are trying to find out who. Joe! What? Blick's dead. Blick? Dead? Good. Damn gun wouldn't go off. I told Tom to get me a good one. Joe, you wanted to kill that guy. I'm gonna buy you a bottle of champagne. What's the matter, Joe? Nothing. Nothing. How about the champagne? Thanks. Where are you going? It's not 11 yet. I don't know. Nowhere. Will I see you tomorrow? I don't know. I don't think so. Somebody just shot a man. How are you feeling? I never felt better in my life. I shot a man once. In San Francisco. I shot him two times. 1939, I think it was, in October. There was a fellow named Blick, or Glick, something like that. I couldn't stand the way he talked to ladies. Went up to my room, got my old pearl handle revolver, waited for him over on Pacific Street. Saw him walking, let him have it two times. Had to throw that beautiful revolver in the bay. <laughs> 